This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Thursday, July 18th. We were working out of Narcotics Division. The boss is Captain Tremblay. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We were returning to the office after lunch when we picked up a radio call regarding a juvenile jumper. We were in the area and we drove over to check it out. Time to check witnesses. Crazy kids get wiped out. You guys must see a lot of this. More than we like. Young kids standing up there swinging a TV antenna, trying to kill the snakes that were after him. Sounds like acid, doesn't it? Either that or he's psycho. Oh, wow, man. Oh, man. Snakes are <laughs> Please, please keep the snakes away. They're after me. Did you see them all around the like crawling sidewalks? All right, take it easy, son. Please. Found these in his pocket. <laughs> LSD. Please. You want some saccharin, Joe? No, thanks. Hot speed, LSD. Why the devil do the kids mess with that garbage? I don't know. It's like they got a grudge against themselves. I mean it, Joe. What's really going on with these young people? That boy today, where's the kick in going out of your head? I don't know. You see them over in juvenile. Eight and nine-year-old glue sniffers, ten-year-old acid freaks. They keep telling us that our society's more sophisticated. Looks like we got the drugs to go along with it, doesn't it? Joe, Bill, I'd like you to meet somebody. Sergeant Joe Friday, Officer Bill Gannon. This is Robert Squire. Mr. Squire? Bob here thinks he has an idea concerning teenage drug addiction. Maybe not stamp it out completely, but at least let it know it's been in a good fight. Sit down. Well, first off, gentlemen, I'll tell you what I told the captain. I don't know beans about crime prevention. I'm a businessman. I like to think I'm a good one. I made a few bucks in the scaffolding business by finding new and better ways to tackle old problems. Last week, I happened to be having dinner with a friend, John Stevens, a parole officer with the California Youth Authority. We got to talking about the growing problem of teenage drug addiction. He said it seemed a hopeless problem. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, who's this old duff to flap his gums? It was pretty much Stevens' reaction, too. He told me to solve it if I thought it was that simple. Well, it's not simple. But I think I've come up with a partial solution, a beginning. No one has been able to curb teenage drug addiction, right? Right. Why? That's the question I ask myself. What is it you people, people like myself, are doing wrong that the competition is doing right? The competition? The dope pushers. They're selling drugs, temporary kicks that wind up making addicts or corpses of their customers. Why are they still in business when all they have to sell is poison? You tell us, Mr. Squire. It's his sales force. His salesmen are kids. One kid uses the junk and talks it up, and before you know it, he sold 10, 20, 50 other kids on it. And who's around to tell the kids that dope is bad? We are. The older generation, teachers, principals, parents, policemen, all of us, according to the kids, the enemy. Gentlemen, if we were selling $5 bills for a dollar and a skate key, the kids wouldn't buy them from us. I got an idea. What's that, sir? Something like counterintelligence. Folks my age, your age, can lecture the kids or arrest them, and that's that. But it takes a kid to convince another kid. Most teenagers try pot or LSD or speed because it's stylish, the in thing to do. They're convinced all the other kids are doing it. And you know how important it is to young people to be in step with the crowd. Okay, well, what if we can get the teenagers themselves to actively oppose the use of narcotics? If they're going to play follow the leader, we've got to make sure the leader isn't a drug freak. 
Let's face it, a small percentage of kids are going to become addicts in spite of everything we can accomplish. And a large percentage of decent kids won't even go near the junk, even if we do nothing. But there's a tremendous number of teenagers sitting on the fence who'll go one way or the other, and they're worth fighting for, aren't they? Makes sense, but how do you make it work? Let me tell you a true story. I once had a sick Siamese kitten, and I took it to the vet. He told me the cat had rickets and prescribed some gelatin capsules containing cod liver oil. Now, the cat needed cod liver oil, and it was good for the cat, and we were determined to give that cat cod liver oil whether it wanted it or not. So we held the cat and shoved capsules down its throat, and we held its mouth open, and that cat clawed and scratched and choked and sputtered and did everything but take us to court and sue us for mistreating him. He just didn't want to swallow the capsule. No way to convince that cat you were doing him a favor. After several days of force-feeding him, trying to shove those darn things down his throat, he accidentally bit into a capsule. All of a sudden, he began licking his chops. After that, we had no trouble with him at all. We merely bought a bottle of cod liver oil, put the stuff on a spoon, and the cat licked it up. Get the message? Maybe. A great deal of the material on drugs and narcotics that's being put out for teenagers is in capsule form, and those young people are not about to buy it, no matter how good it is for them. We know it's good for them, but that's obviously not enough, is it? Tell me a plan, Bob. Well, my friend John Stevens has arranged to let me use a high school classroom. And tomorrow evening, we're holding our first meeting. Stevens has seen to it that the kids who attend receive summer school credit. Where do we fit in? Someone from the police department should be there to let the young people know that adults and police can care without having to run the show. Sounds pretty good to me. You two work along with Bob. Yes, sir. What time and where? Here you are. Okay, we'll be there. Thank you, gentlemen. See you tomorrow night. Hi, Bob. Well, what do you think, Captain? I don't know. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but it makes sense to me. Yes, sir. Let's hope it does to the kids. Good evening, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet Sergeant Joe Friday and Officer Bill Gannon of the Los Angeles Police Department. We've just seen a film on LSD and we're about to discuss it. Go right ahead. We'll stand in the back. We're here to learn. Now, what did we learn from this film we just saw on LSD? Number one, we learned that it can cause chromosome damage, resulting in possible birth defects. Number two, we learned that it can cause severe mental damage. Three, it can bring about vivid and dangerous hallucinations. Now, what else did we learn? Stanley? My name's Stanley Sorrell. I understood this group was gonna be run by teenagers. Well, no disrespect, sir, but you're no teenager, and they're not teenagers either. You're right, especially about me. But this is our first meeting. The officers are here because they want to help. I'm here for the same reason, but I'll gladly allow you to chair the meeting, son. Uh, no, sir, not me. Mr. Squire, may I? Please do. Hi, my name's Ann Flynn. Even before seeing tonight's film, I knew LSD was bad. I know that marijuana and speed and all the rest of that stuff is terrible. We all agree on that, don't we? I mean, that's why we're here. But now what are we supposed to do? Well, what can we do? We're just kids. We can't arrest anyone. Well, we can set an example, maybe. What's that mean? Has anyone here ever tried dope? Okay, we're all clean. Isn't that setting a good example? What more are we expected to do? Not taking dope isn't doing anything. That's being passive. We've got to actively set an example. We've got to make it the in thing not to try dope. Well, how do we do that? By making anyone who'd try pot or pills feel stupid, instead of like some big shot on campus. I guess we all agree on that. But how do you convince anyone? Well, how do you convince anyone in school of anything? Bob, how did you get elected to be treasurer of the student body? Well, first I campaigned. Then I made a speech at the election assembly. And posters help. And slogans and jingles, too. That's right. You convince people that voting for you is the smart in thing to do. Well, we'd all work to help get a friend elected student body president or something like that. Isn't it worth a little effort to keep a friend off that stuff we saw in the movie? All right, so it is. But where do we begin? Well, we've already begun. We're here, when we could be someplace else. And we've picked a name. Smart Teens. I was thinking of a slogan, maybe. How about... SOS for stamp out stupidity. Sounds good to me. If we could come up with some good poster ideas, I'll bet the principal would let us pin them up in the classrooms. And I know exactly where they should be pinned. Right next to the clock, if you ever expect me to see them. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
why don't we all take a crack at coming up with some slogans for posters? How about keep off the grass? That's it, something the kids will all dig. Hey, I got one. Any moron can smoke pot, and most morons do. Great. Uh, somebody should be writing these down. Let's make a list. SOS, staff out stupidity. Yeah, that's good. Any moron can smoke pot, and most morons do. Keep off the grass. Hey, slow down. down. They seemed enthusiastic, but a week's a long time. If they come back next Friday night and bring their friends, maybe you got something here. It was kind of you to offer to ask your friend to draw up posters for the kids. I've known Albertino for a long time. He's a top artist out at Walt Disney's. I'm sure if he has the time to spare, he'd enjoy doing it. Fine. Well, good night, gentlemen. See you next week. Yes, good night. But well, I tell you what I think, and I got a couple of kids. Yeah. They came tonight, but tonight they came out of curiosity. Yeah. But now they know if Smart Teens is going to work, they have to work. One other thing. What's that? Only six kids here tonight. They're gonna need more than that to make it go. Oh, I don't know. Good things have been started with less. How's that? It only took one acorn, didn't it? Studios in Burbank to talk to Albertino about the Smartine posters. Hey, welcome to Bertino Land. Hi, Al. How have you been? Pretty fair. Yourselves? No complaints. Good. Now, tell me what this Smartines is all about and how this little Italian boy can help you stamp out dope addiction. Well, here are the words. Can you supply the music? What do you think of them, Al? Hey, these aren't bad. How soon do you need the artwork? The next meeting is on Friday. Friday? No sweat. It's lucky you guys came to me instead of Rembrandt. I'm not knocking him. He does nice work. But he's slow. You know what I mean? Got a few minutes? A couple. Good. Let me try a few roughs on you. We're no art critics, Al. Quit bragging. Hey, this smart teens. Can it do the job, do you think? It's up to the kids themselves. If they want it to succeed, they can make it happen. Hey, that's great, Al. Well, it's just a rough. Let me try another. These kids are pretty sharp. You know, it's reassuring to find out that all teenagers aren't hooked in some sort of junk. Punks and the misfits get all the headlines. It's a shame, isn't it? Well, maybe your kids can change all that. Sort of like Alcoholics Anonymous, isn't it? I mean, the idea that it takes one to cure one. Well, in a way, Al, but with a big difference. With smart teens, the idea is it takes one to prevent one. How's this? Fine, that's what the kids have in mind, I'm sure. Good, but I'll just work them up in rough till our teenage jury gives them the final okay. We'll be by on Friday and pick them up. They'll be ready. Thanks again. Thanks for asking me. Your friend Mr. Bertino's done a marvelous job. I just hope somebody shows up to appreciate him. understand kids as well as I thought I did. Maybe they'll be along. Maybe they won't.
should begin. We're almost 30 minutes late now. Bob, you know of anybody else coming? Gee, Mr. Squire, they're super. She must be the Pied Piper of L.A. It's my fault we're late. Bob told you, didn't he? Told us what? That we wanted to have a meeting first to make sure everyone knew what Smart Teens was all about. Bob, didn't you tell them? Nobody asked for just now. <sighs> well, anyway, Mr. Squire, we're here. You're here. Okay, everybody, take your seats. Please sit down. All right, may I please have your attention? May I have your attention, please? Well, anyway, we met over at my house so I could explain what Smart Teens was all about. That it's not a social club, and that unless you think that drugs are a menace and you really want to do something about them, not to bother showing up. Well, that scared off four of the kids, but this bunch really wants to go to work. I wrote out a pledge I thought we might use. Uh, in joining Smart Teens, I will not use marijuana, LSD, pet pills, goofballs, heroin, glue, or any kind of illegal drug or narcotic. If accepted for membership in Smart Teens, I will do all I can to encourage my friends and peers to prevent the use of drugs and narcotics only through common sense and education. The second meeting of Smart Teens will now come to order. We have many new members with us tonight. Before we discuss these posters and ideas for others, I think some of our new members should explain why they've decided to join. Lisa, do you want to start? Well, I read in the paper about all those babies being born deformed because of LSD, and I thought something should be done about it. Uh, how about you, Mark? At my school, if you don't try marijuana, they'll call you a square and a jerk or something like that. But maybe if smart teens are success, we'll be able to convince everyone that you're a jerk if you do try it. Lori, why do you want to join? I think the more you know about dope and about what it really does to you, the less anyone with half a brain is going to want to mess around with it. And I figure that the more I can learn about it, the better I'll be able to convince other kids that it's bad. What about you, Howard? I'm 15 years old, and I've tried pot, and I never would again, in spite of the pressure some of the kids have put on me. But I have a nine-year-old brother, and maybe a smart teens works out OK, there'll be less chance that he'll ever want to try this stuff. All right, now let's all take a good look at these posters and see which ones we think are best. Now evaluate them, look at them carefully. Some of them will have to eliminate. You don't need us here. Thanks for all you've done. Study Looks like you were right. They're doing it all themselves. Goodbye, sir. Now you've all had a good chance to look at them. Which poster do you think best sums up the problem? Stanley? What do you think, Joe? Will it work? Can something that starts with 40 kids in a classroom really make a difference? Well, you've got 40 super salesmen in that room and a good product to sell. I know of one success story that started with a lot less. The guy who first got the idea to peddle heroin. Now, with a product like that, just think what the odds against him were. You know, I was worried there for a while. Those kids were so late. But not too late. you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. Slightly over a year ago, smart teens came into existence. There are now several thousand members in Southern California alone. The great majority of today's youngsters are bright and decent human beings. When they have a clear-cut choice to make, they generally make the right decision. Remember, drug addiction is easier to prevent than to cure.